Hey Tom, I'm back and uh, I'm going to explain an entire turn of salamanders and abyssal dwarfs. So the overview of the scenario is that the salamanders have come over this hill ridge over here um, and they're attacking down into the uh, abyssal uh, kind of uh, road area, which is rough terrain. Um, I'll run through the entire turn of the salamanders and then I'll run through the entire turn of the abyssal dwarfs and give you kind of a 15 minute um, primer to how to play this game. Um, so you start uh, first with the move phase. Um, you'll move all your salamanders and then the abyssal dwarves will do their entire turn. For my move phase over here, um, the first thing I'm gonna do is move my greater fire elemental six inches forward. So I'm not gonna charge specifically with him because right now he's in the front arc. So he gets one pivot, one 90 degree turn, and then he'll move six inches forward uh, to about here. So he has to remain about one inch away from the uh, abyssal uh, unit in the movement phase if he's not charging. Then moving up the line, uh, the other uh, firemen uh, regiment will just charge into the abyssal dwarves. Um, coming off a hill, they'll get a, an additional thunderous charge. Uh, my shaman back here um, will just move five inches forward and what he will do is he'll uh, prepare to cast a surge onto the fire elemental. Uh, but actually what I'll do is I'll move him slightly forward so he's off the hill uh, so he's out of the line of sight of the abyssal half-breed champion. So these abyssal half-breeds um, are half abyssal dwarf half horse um, and I'm afraid that they'll charge into the flank of the fire elementals. What I will do is I'll actually sidestep um, these salamander primes over two and a half inches to block uh, the charge of the abyssal half-breeds. And then finally, I'll move my big phoenix forward and turn him slightly so that he can shoot the abyssal half-breeds coming in. All right, so beginning in the range phase, I usually move from uh, one side, either the left side to the right side or the right side to the left side, but you can choose to cast spells or shoot your archers in any order. So starting off with my um, uh, Salamander Priest, I'm gonna cast Surge onto my Greater Fire Elemental. Now he's in a good position because he's only one inch away, um, and I get to roll eight dice for Surge. So here we go. Uh, I got one die. Spells are very simple in this game. All you have to do is roll over a four. Um, so I obviously got, in each die that I roll over four, the model will move one inch that has surge. So the fire elemental will surge into the side uh, and get double attacks during the melee phase that's coming up next. And then next, um, the phoenix is within 16 inches of these abyssal half rates. Uh, it has a flame attack that can reach, uh, reach the target. So they'll roll 10 dice, which is uh, here, and they'll hit on a four and they'll wound on a four too. Uh, I'll explain that in a second. So over here, uh, we've got uh, six hits, so slightly above average. And then what you do is you check the defense model, uh, the defense value of the model with any modifiers. The modifiers are pretty simple here. Usually it's just uh, minus one or minus two. Uh, usually though, you don't see minus two in range. So, but the Phoenix over here has no modifiers to its range attack. So six dice hitting on, uh, wounding on fours. So over here, um, we've got three wounds, right? Uh, so three wounds uh, for the abyssal half rates. So over here, they've taken some damage, and now we need to give them a nerve check. The abyssal half rates have a nerve of 11 and 13. So uh, when they suffer a wound uh, or something else causes them to make a uh, nerve check, you roll two dice and add the wounds. So over here we have six plus three, nine. Um, that is less than 11, uh, so they're not shaken. Uh, and if I would have rolled an eight or a 10, uh, they would have uh, been wavered or then ultimately killed uh, if I would have rolled a 10. Okay, so that ends the Salamander Rage phase. Beginning melee combat for the Salamanders, uh, we'll start, I usually start from the left to the right or the left to the right. So we'll start over here with the uh, main fire elemental regiment that charged in. So normally they hit on fours and as if you could see over here, uh, Fire Elemental is four plus. Um, they are charging into rough terrain, um, but they have Pathfinder. So they'll uh, hit on fours 
and since they're charging off a hill, since they're more than 50% on this hill, they'll also get a, an additional thunderous charge uh, value. They'll hit on fours and wound on twos against the abyssal dwarfs. All right, so we got uh, four, five hits, about, uh, about average there. Uh, and then five wounds. So it's not looking too good for the abyssal dwarfs. Over here on the side, we have the greater fire elemental that has flanked the immortal guard on the, on the side here. So since it gets double attacks, it means it rolls 16 dice. Eight times two is 16. Uh, it hits on a three. It also has Pathfinder, um, but it also has crush, uh, crush three. So hits on threes, wounds on twos. Twelve. So the Greater Fire Elemental has a special rule. It's called Vicious Melee, which allows it to reroll its ones. Um, vicious uh, allows you to reroll ones on damage, and Elite allows you to reroll uh, ones on hits. So there you go. So it takes another 12 wounds. Um, and that brings us up to 16. Uh, so basically right now, this unit has taken um, a devastating amount of wounds, um, requiring only a double one in order to survive. So we'll roll double ones. It does not. But because the half-breed champion is next to it and has inspiring, um, it forces a, a second reroll on its nerve test. And you see it did not survive, so it is dead. Once the unit is dead, um, you have a couple of options. You can either back up, uh, move forward, or pivot. Uh, in this case, because of the abyssal half-breeds are here, and I don't think I was able to move the salamanders enough to uh, stop a flank charge, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to readjust the fire elementals to face the oncoming uh, abyssal champions. And that ends the turn for the Salamanders. Okay, so we're going to go back into the uh, first turn of the Abyssals. Uh, now they need to counterattack, and they need their kind of desperate straights because they lost the center and the um, uh, center part of the road. So going through, um, first off, the uh, um, Abyssal half free champions are going to charge across the uh, are going to charge across and attack this troop of salamanders uh, here, but they have something called regeneration, which allows them to heal their wounds. So they took three wounds from the phoenix pri previous turn, but we're going to roll three dice, and if they get uh, five plus, they heal automatically. Yeah, no luck for them. So still on, uh, still attacking. So they are concerned though because the, the salamander prime troop might be hard to hard to defeat. So we're going to charge in here too with their uh, specialized uh, abyssal half breed champion. And hopefully they can break this and begin turning the salamander line. So um, no range phase uh, for, the abyssal, uh, for the abyssal dwarfs. So we'll go straight into melee. The abyssal half breed champions did charge and they have a hinder charge over this uh, uh, rough terrain um, indented road. So we'll go ahead and we'll attack now. Uh, it's minus one for them to hit on a, on a, on a hindered charge. Hitting on force, uh, you can see they did three hits, a little bit below average. So, And then to wound, uh, plus two crushing. Uh, well, they have one thunderous and one crushing, uh, so they took three wounds there so far. The Abyssal Half-Breed Champion uh, also attacking. It has six attacks and then has crush two and uh, also wounds on a two. So, uh, actually, it, it also, that um, the individual character also has a hinder charge though because it passed over that rough terrain. So it hit twice, uh, one wound. Now, all, mo the army rule for Abyssal Dwarfs is that they have vicious melee. So they, uh, the Abyssal Champion gets to reroll this one, kind of in a critical situation. Yep, you only get one reroll though. So it took four wounds. So we'll do a nerve test real fast. The heavy infantry here have a 10, 12. So we'll need to roll an eight or a, um, a 10. Yep, there you go. Uh, uh, looks like they broke, but 
just like the Abyssal Half-Breed Champion, if this Salamander Prime or Salamander Priest is within six inches, they get another, uh, another nerve re uh, test. So let's roll that again. Oh, double ones. Looks like those salamanders are staying around. So these guys have uh, little chance, but we're gonna play it out anyway and see what happens. So uh, movement phase for the salamanders in turn two. The phoenix is going to just turn around and face forward. Um, the fire elementals are gonna charge into uh, this individual character. This individual character, because he's an individual character, will snap uh, directly to uh, and realign to uh, the charging unit. And then these guys, and then the greater fire elemental will move forward six inches and turn. And hopefully he can get a very long surge in order to uh, go into the flank again of the um, the flank of the abyssal cavalry. So about ooh, that's looking like about a five-inch surge into the uh, half-free cavalry in there. All right, so that uh, finishes up the salamander move phase. All right, so this is where it gets exciting. We're going to have a situation where we'll do our range attacks. The Phoenix has a five dice heal. So um, it will attempt to cast heal on these salamanders here, uh, which will remove a point of damage for each um, four plus roll. Uh, so two, it heals back two wounds on the salamanders. All right, second range action, and probably the most important for the salamanders is the surge roll again for the, um, uh, for the greater fire elemental. It'll need about five successes in order to surge into the side of the abyssal cavalry. Whoa, looks like we got it right there. It's going into the side of the cavalry and I think that's gonna be the game. But we'll roll it out and see what happens. We're gonna start here with the abyssal cavalry uh, because they are a scoring unit, um, meaning they have unit strength. Whereas individual characters like the half breed champion and the salamanders don't have unit strength and can't score many objectives. Salamander Primes have 10 attacks, hitting on fours. So, two more dice. All right, hitting on fours. Um, and they have crush one, so they'll wound on threes. All right, that's a good roll for fours. All right, wounding on threes. That's another three wounds uh, for the Abyssal Cavalry. And then of course here, this is why they call it ranks and flanks, greater fire elementals coming into the side here. That's another 16 dice for the cavalry to soak up. Uh, Pathfinder, so it doesn't suffer the minus one to attack, and then crush three. So hitting on threes, wounding on, four, uh, wounding on twos. All right, so that's um, 12 hits again. Uh, and then it wounds on twos, but it also has the vicious rule, which means uh, it's gonna do you a lot of damage here. That's off the trail. And you see that vicious really paid off. We got to reroll four dice right there. So that's another 12 wounds onto the um, abyssals, uh, and they are devastated. All right. So we'll go ahead, we'll uh, do two nerve checks here for the cavalry and take them uh, and see if they, uh, one, two. Remember, if you roll double ones, uh, they, stay, they stay around no matter what. So that's the end of the abyssal cavalry and the abyssal force. Looks like salamanders carried the day again. Well, what happened here was the fire elemental was able to get around the flank of the Abyssal Dwarfs and basically roll the entire line, first with the Immortal Guard and then with the Abyssal uh, Cavalry counterattack. It was able to roll up the, uh, the Abyssal line and defeat them in detail. And that's kind of the joy of Ranks and Flanks is you get that feel of, of uh, angles and positioning. And if you uh, successfully uh, either break through the center and turn outwards or you break through one flank on the right or the left, um, you could have a very uh, interesting and fulfilling game.